Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you quite possibly the best thing you can do with beans. <laughs> I love a white bean. Uh, today I'm using butter beans and we are making some spicy miso butter beans that are ridiculously good. You're going to have to trust me. I'm going to show you how to serve them two different ways. They are mouth watering like just thinking about them makes my mouth just water and if you're familiar with you know traditional way of cooking in southern italy you know we like to use anchovy a lot and we like to use anchovy for that really beautiful umami salty flavor that you just don't get from salt i'm doing the same thing but using miso uh, because it kind of gives you the same vibe the same flavor profile and these are i'm telling you they are absolutely dynamite let me show you what i'm working with you need some beans. Like I said, today I'm using butter beans. These are just two cans that I have just rinsed and drained. Water, a little soy. This is white miso. Um, if you're using red miso, you're gonna wanna use about half the amount because red miso tends to be a little spicy. I'm using a little bit of sambal uh, or just a chili paste of your choice. You can also use sriracha. You can use a pinch of hot pepper flakes, whatever your heart desires. Then I'm using some shallots and some garlic, and then you'll also need some lemon. Now, I'm gonna be sort of showing it to you two different ways where you can make them really brothy and delicious and serve them as a side dish, or you can stir in some kale, sear some shrimp, top it on there, and it is so phenomenal, your brain will explode. So, I'm gonna show you both ways because why not? What I'm gonna do now is just slice my shallots and my garlic, you can use any allium. And allium is anything in the onion family. You could use some green onions. You could use a little bit of regular onion, a little bit of uh, red onion. You could use a leek if you wanted to. I really love the mild oniony flavor you get from shallots. So I tend to use them a lot. But like I said, don't make a trip to the grocery store just for that. Um, and you know, miso is something that stays good in your fridge for a long time. So say you're someone like me who uh, lives in a beautiful town, but in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and your really big supermarkets or Asian markets or anything like that, they're a good 45 minutes away. So when I go, I always like to take, you know, get the kind of things that I can keep on hand for a while and miso paste is one of them. But I can also find it at Wegmans, I can find it at, at larger grocery stores. Um, so it's not difficult to find at all, but it is really easy to keep on hand, stir it into soups and stews, and it just adds a beautiful note of flavor. And then you can use any beans that you want. Now, admittedly, I've never made this, I've never made this um, with black beans or kidney beans or anything like that. I've always used just, um, cannellini beans or butter beans, but I can't imagine it wouldn't work. It probably wouldn't just wouldn't be as pretty. So in my shallow Dutch oven here, I'm adding my shallots and my garlic. I add them to cold oil and then bring it all to temperature so that it infuses the oil. And this is just a little bit of regular olive oil. And all I'm going to do is just sweat these out until they become translucent and they kind of cook down a little bit and it's gonna be fabulous. Those look great. I'm gonna use about yay much of my chili paste. It's really spicy, so you really don't need a whole lot, but you know, just like anything else, add what you like. If you like it really spicy, add more. It's all a matter of taste. Add the beans, stir them around. Now at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and add my water. Beautiful. Add my miso. Get that right in there and just a splash of soy. It has sort of a different saltiness, so that's why I like to add both, um, and I really feel like it benefits from both, but if you just wanna use one, um, you could just go ahead and stick to the miso. All I'm going to do is bring this to a simmer, put it on low heat, and let it simmer for like about 10 minutes or so, and then I will show you the next step. If you don't wanna serve it brothy, then we will move on and adding the kale at that point been about 10 minutes, you can see that broth has really thickened up. Now, if you want to, you can serve them like these, very brothy, maybe with a hunk or so of bread on the side, which I know this sounds crazy with the miso, but trust me, it just works. Uh, or you can let them reduce a little bit longer, a little bit of parsley, a squeeze of lemon, done. Or you can add some kale, let the kale wilt, then add a squeeze of lemon, 
right? And then boom, they're brothy and delicious and yummy, yummy, yummy. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to add all the kale, I'm just going to add about that much. What I'm going to do is put a lid on this, just keep it on low, just until the kale just sort of wilts a little bit and I want, then I'll take off the lid so that the excess broth can sort of like thicken up and a lot of the water can evaporate. And I'm going to go ahead and saute some shrimp. Simple, salt and pepper on my shrimp in a hot skillet just for a minute or two on both sides. And the beans with the shrimp on top are, it's just phenomenal. And it's a great meal. It's something that you can just do in the middle of a work week when time and patience is just short, but you want something really fabulous. You can serve the beans with some rice with the kale. The possibilities are endless, but this is really phenomenal. And I feel like it's really versatile. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get my, going on my shrimp. Look at that. The kale has wilted, but it's still pretty bright green. You can add more, of course. I probably would add more if I wasn't sharing this with you. Because I just want to be able to, I, I want to be able to have you look and see what that sauce and broth turns into. It's pretty phenomenal, I have to say. I went ahead and took my shrimp, simply seasoned them on both sides with some salt and pepper, added them to a skillet with a little bit of olive oil, cooked them a minute or so on each side, and they're done. That's all you need to do with them. Now this to me is like the perfect consistency, um, but you can keep cooking it until it, you know, it thickens up even more. At this point, all I want is just a small squeeze of lemon. It really kind of brightens everything up and brings everything to life, if you will. And then that's it. That simple and that easy. This would be a fantastic main or the beans alone would be a fantastic side dish, but I'm telling you right now, these together, the shrimp and those beans, they're literally what food dreams are made of, okay? Maybe you don't have food dreams, but I have food dreams. Look at that. That brothiness just gets really nice and thick. You're gonna have to trust me when I tell you, these are the best beans I've ever eaten in my whole life. Um, I'm not kidding, and I eat my fair share of beans. That's not to say that my nonna's Scott all and beans isn't good, but this is just like, oh, this is just next level. A little bit of bean. Mm. Now, I need a little bit of shrimp. Wow. It's like the miso meets brininess of the shrimp and it's just absolute heaven. You have to make this recipe. I, I'm excited about it because it's truly one of the best bean dishes I've ever had in my life and I want you to experience it too. Go to lauraindthekitchen.com, get the written recipe. I promise you, you will love them. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.